Back on today's Family First, we're seeing a lot of little effects of the pandemic in places you wouldn't think to check. According to one sleep expert, one of those effects is a rise in co-sleeping. Yes. Now, just to be clear, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have the kids crawl into bed with you in order to help them sleep. It's really a personal choice. But if it's coming at the cost of your sleep, eh, it's a different story. Dr. Linnell Schneeberg of Connecticut Children's Medical Center said the stress of the pandemic is only part of the reason why more kids seem to be co-sleeping these days and doing so at later ages. Especially at the beginning, kids were more anxious. They didn't really know what this virus was. Um, and the schedules are more lax and the school bus is not coming. And so everybody doesn't have to get out the door, you know, when they used to. So if it's causing you to lose sleep, your first action should be to reestablish that bedtime routine and stick to it. It's a big theme in her book, Become Your Child's Sleep Coach. But if that doesn't work and your little one is little enough, she said consider a small mattress or sleeping bag on the floor in your bedroom. I call it a nest. You can teach them you can come to this little nest in the night if you're worried. But if you wake me up, you get a walk back to your room. That works well for late night wake ups. But what about getting to sleep in the first place? Dr. Schneeberg said there's one guiding principle that needs to be followed for all kids. Whatever a child needs to fall asleep, they need it to get back to sleep, right? So a lot of parents think, oh, OK, well, I could lie down with them at bedtime and then they'll be good to go. But everybody wakes up at night and the child will wake up and realize they're missing the thing that helped them fall asleep. So if your kiddo has trouble getting to sleep, you may have noticed he or she wants to talk about it right then and there, maybe as a stall tactic. Well, Dr. Schneeberg said a good alternative is a worry jar. So what we do is we have them have a little, little pieces of paper. They write their worries, any that come up around bedtime, even in the daytime, another, you know, during the day is fine. You put them in the jar and then during the day, you have some really great one on one time with your child and you pull the worries out of the jar and you talk about them. I wonder if the worry jar would work for me not to help my kids sleep, <laughs> help me sleep. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just write them down, put them in. I'll deal with it with Carrie. Tomorrow. Anything that works. <laughs> yes, because you know what? The rules are the same. Everybody can benefit by having a good bedtime routine. That and that's true. something I'm really trying to impress upon our 10 year old, too, because, you know, he just wants to do whatever he wants to do. And like how about yourself? Do you have a routine? <laughs> not really. Yes. Put the kids to bed and pass out. Yeah, that's my I routine. Hear, yeah. All right.